Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at Venom issue 13, legacy number 178. This issue was written by Colin Bunn, illustrated by Iban Coelho, colored by Andres Mosa, lettered by VCs Clayton Cowles. Assistant editors were Lauren Amaro and Danny Kazem, edited by Devin Lewis, Nick Lowe, executive editor. Cover art by Ryan Stegman, JP Mayer, and Frank Martin. Cover's actually really cool. That scene has nothing to do with what's going on in the book. It would have made a better story. So we pick up where we left off surprisingly with Dylan and Eddie on the run and they're this time they're trying to dodge some crazy monsters because War of the Realms just suddenly started happening no real synopsis of what's going on there and Eddie is trying to get Dylan to a safe place because he knows of a safe house that was run by Rex that we saw back in Venom issue 1 and it's full of guns but they have to get by some evil creatures and Eddie has to do some pretty nasty things to get there and he gets pretty messed up because he doesn't have the Venom symbiote anymore well that's when he runs into this witch lady that has a dreaming stone and the dream stone gives eddie a sort of symbiote costume but it's not a thinking one it doesn't have the intelligence it just seems to be kind of a crude replica that's made from enchantments and things don't go the way that weird witch lady thought they would and she's got eyeballs in her hair so eddie goes on a little bit of a rampage and another offer is placed to somebody else this was an okay issue the story Story was decent. Some of Cullen Bunn's better superhero work. He's not a real good superhero author. He's much better at horror. So I don't know why they interrupted Donny Cates' storyline to do this one. Especially because Cullen Bunn would have had to know what's coming up and what was going on in Venom. And that seems like a lot of catch-up work to make somebody do when they could have just had the regular writer and artist on this. Speaking of the art, it's significantly inferior. I think it's a little more anime inspired with people having like sweat lines and exaggerated proportions that don't really match and it doesn't seem like it's anything special it looks like it's pretty stock standard anime style art i didn't care for it but the colors did a good job the art's probably okay for the style it's in but it doesn't look like it's anything stand out or particularly exciting it just seems very mediocre for what anime art is so i didn't care for the art but the story was surprisingly decent especially for a forced tie-in it really throws off the tenor of the book because this is just like a three issue excursion that has absolutely nothing to do with the storyline they've been meticulously building since issue one so i was a little bothered by that but i will recommend it if you can pick it up cheap i would just get the trade paper back with the entire story arc in it because so far it doesn't look like it's particularly memorable and because of the interruption it throws off the pacing and that kind of ruins a lot of what they were doing so i think that actually hurt it but it's worth reading i just won't pay a lot for it it's bargain bin book material and i know some of the these issues have been going for a ridiculous amount of money online like seven and eight dollars and upward and i think that's exorbitant so i would say just buy the trade paperback for cheap and read the story arc that way that'll do it for this one thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways links to my patreon streamlabs and teespring store are in the description and as always we hope to see you on the next one